this chapter is all about gases okay so far we have dealt with solids in stoichiometry and then we dealt with aqueous solutions um, and now we're going to go into gases okay and gases are very different um, types of substances they have very different properties which is why there is a whole chapter so first of all let's talk a little bit about what are the different properties of gases first of all they're compressible um, which means that you can take them down to a very small volume if you wanted to. Uh, whether you like it or not, they're going to expand to fill the container. Okay, it's very rare that when a gas is very heavy that it does not fill the container, but otherwise, uh, slowly but surely, it's going to fill the container. Okay, and um, there are some new quantities that we're going to learn, some new terms that we're going to learn, like pressure, for example, um, and pressure, volume, temperature. These are very different when related to gases. And so we're gonna talk about these and they're actually quite related to each other. So when we were talked about solids, we didn't really talk about pressure so much. We didn't talk about temperature, we didn't need to. But the properties of gases are really dependent on the pressure and the volume and temperature and the quantity, okay, that we have for the gases. Most gases will have low density. Um, and when we say low density, it means lower than water in general. So gases will usually float, but that is not entirely true. Okay, this is a general property. There are some gases which really have high density and so they actually sink to the bottom. Um, and then uh, gases form homogeneous mixtures, okay, which is true. So you can take any two gases, for example, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, all of these, they will mix uh, completely to form a homogeneous mixture. And then there's another thing which is called the kinetic molecular theory. This is given towards the end of your chapter. Okay, I'm covering it before because I think it gives a nice idea of uh, gases. Okay, uh, but in your textbook, it is towards the end. All right, and so this is a theory uh, that is developed by scientists in order to figure out how gases actually behave. Okay, and one of the most important thing about gas behavior is that the molecules are always in motion okay so and it's not just an assumption it's almost true also okay that gases that gas molecules are always moving all right so uh, in any case the postulates for kinetic theory are that gases are composed of molecules and their sizes are negligible which means that the atomic sizes are negligible all right uh, molecules move randomly in straight lines in all direction and at various speeds. So this is the key thing over here that they're moving in straight lines, which means they're not going in a curve, they're going in a straight line, okay? And they can go in whichever direction they want to. There is no one particular direction that they have to go into. The forces of attraction and repulsion is pretty much negligible, okay? So, um, when they collide then they might feel something but other than that there is no repulsion or attraction between two molecules um, remember all of these postulates that we are talking about these are only theories which means that they can be changed and they can be manipulated and if you have a better theory then please come up with it so this is just a theory okay all right and then the fourth one is that when the molecules collide the collisions are elastic. And when we say the collisions are elastic, it means that no energy is lost or gained in the process, okay? So molecules will collide completely, bounce off each other, and then go away again in straight lines, okay? Again, no curves, okay, whatsoever. And then finally, the average kinetic energy of the molecules is proportional to the temperature, which means that if you increase the temperature of the gas, the molecules are going to start moving faster. They will get more energy. So these are the theories for um, for gases. I don't need you to remember this as one, two, three, four, five. I just want you to be able to say that, yes, I know the theories, okay? The kinetic molecular theory. So it can be in any random order, uh, but you need to know them. Let's look at one of the properties of gases that's really important is the pressure. And we kind of mentioned it just a little bit before that uh, pressure is one of those important factors that affect the properties of gases. So we need to understand what this is. And besides, we have not um, learned about pressure before. Okay, and so uh, pressure is generally defined as force per unit area. Okay, and the SI unit for pressure 
is pascals, PA, pascals. The other units for pressure are atmosphere, which is ATM, millimeters HG, tor, and bar. Okay, and um, this is the unit conversion between pascals and newtons per meter square. The newtons per meter square is coming from force per unit area. And these are the relationships between um, the other units. So for example, one atmosphere is equal to 101,325 pascals. One atmosphere is 760 mmHg. One atmosphere is 760 torr and so on and so forth. Okay, and so these are the relationships, <clears throat> which I will give you all these conversion factors, okay, because um, the only SI factor here is Pascal, and sadly, we really don't use Pascals, okay, in um, gases. We will work more with uh, millimeters of mercury, and we will work with atmospheres, okay, but these are all the units of Pascals for pressure, excuse me, all the units for pressure. How do you measure uh, pressure? And the pressure is measured by a barometer, okay? So when we're talking about the millimeters of mercury, where is that coming from, okay? And that is coming from the fact that if you take a trough of mercury and put an inverted tube in that trough, after a while, the mercury is gonna start rising in that tube. And usually it will rise to about 76 centimeters, which is 760 millimeters then. And that's why um, it's called 760 millimeters of Hg because the mercury rises up to 760 millimeters, all right? And so a barometer is a very good device. So normally uh, the pressure or atmospheric pressure would be 760 millimeters Hg, but if you take it to different places, it might actually uh, measure a little bit different, okay? But normally it is about 760 millimeters of mercury. So barometer is a device that is generally used for measuring atmospheric pressure. And a manometer is a device that is actually used to measure the pressure um, in, in a container, all right? So that way you kind of monitor what the pressure is inside here so that it doesn't burst or, you know, um, get out of hand. So that's what a manometer is used for. Um, again, sadly, you will never see a barometer or a manometer, probably, okay, because uh, these things are pretty much out of date now. There are other ways of measuring uh, pressure, and manometers are still used in the labs, but um, not so much in all the labs, okay, because it deals with mercury, and uh, most people don't like dealing with mercury, okay, so, but in any case, manometer is still sometimes used, but um, barometer is not really used um, as much. There are other instruments to measure the pressure. So the key takeaways from this PowerPoint is, of course, to learn about the properties of gases, to know your kinetic molecular theory, know all the principles. Okay, you should be able to differentiate what is a property and what is a theory of the gases. And then, of course, we focused a lot on the gas pressure units because there are different kinds of units in here. So make sure you know how to do the <clears throat> excuse me unit conversions and the calculations for it. Regarding the measurements, we usually don't do measurement in labs uh, for pressure, so. Uh, uh, make sure you know your units and conversions.